Welcome back to Grand Tactician Civil War, our Union Campaign. Where we left off the last episode is we are about to have a fairly large battle, about 50,000 versus 45 to 50,000, right here in uh, Northern Virginia. <clears throat> it is not showing right now, but that's just because, you know, I reloaded... Uh, you know, I did a save last episode and then reloaded. As soon as time starts moving, that I think that battle will pop up again. And basically we've got the Army of the Potomac and the Army of the Shenandoah on the Confederate side. One commanded by Longstreet. And last we saw, the Army of the Shenandoah is commanded by Stonewall Jackson. So that's probably still the case. I don't know. No, we do know that Longstreet is commanding this force. And they have come out from Winchester, right here uh, at the tail end of Autumn, and are attacking Hooker, uh, the Army of the Severn. Now, Patterson and McDowell and these two armies are within reinforcing range. But it's going to take some hours for them to get to the site of the battle. When the battle opens, it's going to be about 50,000 Confederates against Hooker's 22,000. So the question will be, can Hooker hang on long enough for Patterson and McDowell to come up? And even when they do... It, that just puts the battle on an even footing, not uh, giving a superiority in numbers. So that's kind of the bad side. The good side is the Confederacy is attacking us. So this is naturally going to be a defensive battle on our end. And I believe that works heavily in our favor as long as... Hooker doesn't get flanked. You know, I'm pretty confident if they just walk straight into our entrenchments, and I believe we'll have some entrenchment uh, <clears throat> available to us. <coughs> if they just walk straight into the line, yeah, it'll do fine. But with so many uh, enemy brigades, if they lap around the edges and, you know, that that could get bad even even with the AI on the other side. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, either way, I, you know I don't know if this is going to be a decisive battle in terms of uh, the long term war, but it is pretty. It is going to be pretty decisive in basically how 1861 ends. And this tension we've been having of a sizable Confederate force here and how to dislodge them, or if they can be dislodged, uh, kind of holding Grant in the area. The kind of tension that's been going on for the past uh, four to six weeks in this area of Virginia, that is going to get resolved here. Uh, following this battle, one would think. One thing I am going to do is I am going to go ahead and start win or lose. I don't see a continuing reason for Grant to be way out of place over here in Pennsylvania, Maryland area. I'd like to get him back over to Kentucky. So I am going to start moving him. But on his way, back to where he's supposed to be, I'm going to pop him back into Wheeling, West Virgi uh, Wheeling Virginia still and get this little area back in uh, back under our control. Hopefully he uses uh, the railroads to get there. One reason I don't want Grant 
fighting quite yet. I mean, against Polk would have been okay. But uh, pretty much all of the advanced small arms, all the rifles, have gone into these three armies. All of Grant's soldiers are still on the mixed muskets, which is the lowest default and not very good. Hopefully over the winter we're able to get some better guns to Grant's soldiers. Really nothing else to say about uh, Well, there is a little bit. Lion has gotten up in position now to start building that final fort to guard the uh, landward approaches to St. Louis. Uh, I think that's a fine spot for it right there. And McClellan is still trying to... Well, McClellan has got his supply depot here now. And is back up to 100% in supply. So, that's good news. So the next question is, do I want... Yeah, let's go ahead and have McClellan build a fort here and make sure we hang on to Charleston. Or do I want him to advance up and put it here? No, I, th I think here. If the Rebs ever want Charleston back, they're going to have to siege a fort to do it. And there's nothing new to say on the, on the naval front. Polk did not retreat all that far after he was pushed back from Fort Washington. I would have thought he'd come at least over across the river. Maybe he's, I don't think he's still retreating. And I have to admit, I'm not 100% sure what that icon means. Might mean raiding, I'm not sure. I know it's buried somewhere in the uh, field book in one of these um, oh there we go Well, I don't see it, though. I guess it just means he's moving. Just marching. Not any special status. Right. Enough jibber-jabber. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start advancing time. And I believe that this battle is going to pop right up. And there it is. Actually, you know what? We have the option to defend. Which would allow time for McDowell and Patterson to come up and start a battle on equal footing in terms of numbers. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. So. Let's just get... Uh,
Yeah, let's just get Patterson and McDowell up here. And have all, you know, have everybody on station. I think that's the way to go. Now the Confederates could force a battle on their own, but at least Patterson and uh, McDowell would be a little bit closer if that happens. Yeah, looks like Polk might be coming up. He's marching to the sound of guns. Nope, nope, he's headed south. Off you go, Polk. It's fine with me. <laughs> McDowell at destination. Okay, we've now got two federal corps. The, the game's already recognizing them as corps rather than armies. Now I got two federal corps involved. And actually, Patterson, we may need to switch him to offensive in order to get him to count, as it were. It's actually kind of even with a very slight advantage toward our side. And which, let's see, which core is it or which army? Okay, so Patterson is counted as being involved. We need to get McDowell a little closer. Grant's on his way up to Wheeling. For some reason, not using the railroad. I think this, seem, this symbol, this kind of eyelash symbol, <laughs> looks like an eyelash to me. I think that means entrenched. Yeah, entrenched. Which, he's been moving. I switched him to offensive mode. I don't know why he is, quote, entrenched, unquote. Unless it's because he's now counted as being involved in this kind of protracted siege here. Maybe that's why. Okay, now 
three federal corps. Although the number of infantry haven't changed. Army of the Severn, Department of Pennsylvania. So it's showing McDowell's army as included in the federal force, but it hasn't updated the number of troops available yet. Let that percolate a little longer. Did Patterson's stance change? Yeah. Offensive stance. Okay, the number of troops has updated. 50,000 infantry, 88 guns, 41,000 infantry, and 6,000 cavalry, so 47,000 troops, and 92 guns. It's about as even as it can be. And the advantage is on our side. Fifty six percent chance of victory. I'm going to go ahead and assault. If the siege protracts, it'll come out in our favor. That'll last a while, and basically Longstreet and Jackson will simply withdraw or retreat a distance. I'm looking for something a little bit more game-changing than that which may or may not occur if we do an assault. I'm going to go ahead and do it and see what happens. And this will probably be a pretty long battle. It'll probably be a pretty long episode. That we're, I'm almost already uh, almost 30 minutes into already okay this is a meeting engagement so we may not be able to stay completely on the defensive <clears throat> we only have the Army of the Severn at the beginning. 
Does it tell us? Oh goodness. Eighteen hours for Patterson to come up. Eighteen hours for McDowell to come up. And that is not what I thought was going to happen. No, well, 17 hours. Okay, do we have visibility on, I don't know if it would tell us if there's a reinforcement situation here. I don't know if we would know that. I have to assume that both Jackson and Longstreet are on the field now. Okay, well, this is what it is. I thought I was helping myself with that little maneuver. Maybe not. There is only one objective. Where is it? It's way over here. And we are starting all the way... Well, where are we starting? So this is so okay. So Hooker's down here in the southeast corner. There isn't really a direct road route up to the objective. This road. So we have um, this road and this road for our two spots where McDowell and Patterson will eventually come up. Don't see any up in these areas. And the Confederate. Well, that's interesting. And the one Confederate, uh, the Confederate routes are up in the northwest corner. Okay, so that makes sense. Apparently, we are able. We've got this little sliver. I don't know why we'd use it, but it is interesting that we've got this little sliver over here where we could deploy if we decided. Not going to do that. Can deploy all the way up here. But even up here, there's not just a speedy way you know, there's not like a road going straight to this factory. <clears throat> but I believe the AI will march directly across and try to take this point. That in itself is not a big deal, but it will change the character of the AI's behavior. Once they get that point, they will be defensive and the honest will be upon us to attack and I don't know if I want that. Definitely not here in the early going, but even after uh, our additional forces come.
on the other hand, I, you know, I don't think I want to come up into Winchester and get out here in kind of this open area. There's just too much, uh, too much likelihood of getting flanked. If I came up here and tried to block his way to the objective. I think the thing to do is Hooker is just going to stay defensive, essentially going to concede the objective and just kind of dig in. This line right along in here looks pretty good. It's wooded on this side of the creek, but more open on the other side and the creek itself will provide uh, some cover. And we could actually put in some entrenchments, breastworks along in here as well. Does that mean he'll attack? No, but it will keep Hooker out of trouble until Patterson and uh, McDowell come up. And then one of them could kind of come in on Hooker's right and one on the left and then kind of swing an attack around this way. I think that's what I'm going to do. This is Hooker's army's first combat, but that's not true for all of his troops. Fremont and Wallace's uh, divisions have not fought before. And you can see here, Lytle's brigade, first combat. But Hunter's division, the, uh, the third division, uh, came over from McDowell's Corps and they have fought through the earlier battles this year. So Hunter's uh, division is in a little bit better shape. You know, Hunter himself has already got three stars, veteran officer. Most of that came from the earlier fights. So these divisions are battle experienced, or at least two of them are. I guess Prentice didn't really get that much fighting in the earlier battles. But also because they came out of McDowell's armor, army, although they're a bit more experienced, uh, these brigades are smaller, partially from previous losses, but primarily from previous uh, expired enlistments. But these guys are rifle armed. This center division is only musket armed, but I think Wallace's division has got rifles as well. What about artillery? What's a good artillery spot? Just to kind of cover this open area here. Topographically, topographically, this would be a good spot, but I don't know if they're going to have any line of sight through these trees. Maybe right in here, pointed in this direction. Maybe. Uh, maybe right in here.
Or I might just place them right up in line with the infantry interspersing the batteries in, in little gaps along the way. Maybe that's the way to go. And the second question is, do I put entrenchments or do I just let them use the creek for cover? I think the entrenchments are going to be better. If I set the entrenchments back a little bit, then there's skirmishers can actually use the creek for cover. But then that will cut down their visibility as well. Okay, I'm kind of dawdling here. Is that correct? That looks like no, yeah, that's a parapet. All right. Well, it's red. I don't, for some reason, it's not eligible. Maybe because of the way I'm crossing that road. Okay, and that looks it's legal apparently, or was a second ago. So that's about a brigade's worth of parapet frontage, and that cost two engineering points. So we won't actually get cover from the creek. Skirmishers might, but it will also cause, uh, you know, it'll it'll slow down anyone trying, you know, any brigades that come in and try to charge the entrenchments. That creek will slow them down. It will give them some cover too, but uh, 
That should help break up the momentum of an attack. connect these? Not really, no. <laughs> Okay, there's Hooker's position. The next question is, do I want to build some breastworks now or, or additional parapets for Patterson and McDowell to come up and occupy? I think the answer is no, because they work in both directions. If there's a vacant trench and a Confederate brigade gets into it, it's going to have cover too. I don't want to di dig uh, fortifications that the enemy can take <laughs> and use. For, you know, I don't want to build trenches for them. All right. I'm just going to put Wallace here in, uh, in these. Not quite room for this entire division here, but having a brigade in reserve in the center is probably not a bad idea. I could probably squeeze them all in there if I wanted to. I'm just leave, but I'm going to leave Meigs kind of, kind of here. It may be needed elsewhere if I need to shore up a weak spot.
Okay, artillery. Well, this is kind of showing that they can cover from from up here. No, not anymore. It's pretty short range. The sun back. Nope. Not from over this way. Nope, that's not good. That's a little better. wouldn't actually it's a little better in here don't have any coverage over here If I take a battery and just put it right here with the infantry in this gap. Oh, that reaches out a pretty good way here. It's a little exposed, though. <laughs> I just need to keep an eye on that. If I need to pull them back, I need to pull them back a little way. Put uh, one battery there. I think I might be able to squeeze a battery right in here. If I put, how does this look? Man, it's really hard to see the firing cones. I don't see any for this battery. I think he's blind there. Yeah, that's not actually too bad. It's got a nice uh, line of fire this way and this way to either side of this wood. And then protect it in the uh, entrenchments. Okay. Not really going to go out of my way to counteract 
um, Longstreet coming over and taking this objective. This is just basically if he decides to attack us, this is where we're going to stand. And hopefully we don't get outflanked on either end. It is 2.30 in the afternoon, so we've got about, it's October, so I would expect it'll probably get dark around 7 o'clock. Probably got to hold on for about five hours. But at 14.30, 17 hours, we're looking at Patterson and uh, McDowell coming up at about 9 o'clock in the morning. So they're not going to arrive overnight either. Clock ticking. Yeah, we'll get the artillery guy up here. And of course, we need to get the actual army commander up here. Go ahead and throw out skirmishers just for a little bit of extra vision. Make sure everyone's on fire at long range orders. Which in my opinion should be default, but it isn't. Okay, there's some cavalry predictably headed toward the factory. Infantry behind. And they definitely see us, they're under artillery fire. like whatever <laughs> just go out by head into the factory <laughs> and that's okay they can have it I'm gonna sit right here until my other until my buddies show up Okay, once he takes his objective, if he does turn and decide to attack, it's going to be along this axis. I kind of feel like I need to move Hunter. 
It doesn't look like there's going to be any conf Well, this is one of the two Confederate Corps. We don't know where Jackson is. Yeah, I'm going to shift Hunter. I'm also going to shift this battery. Tell him to limber up first. And I'm giving these intermediate position orders because if I just tell them go over here, then they'll just tromp right through these woods, possibly through these entrenchments, and go a lot slower and get all tired and stuff. So far, Longstreet is not interested in engaging us. Which at this stage of the battle is fine. Speed back up a little bit. thought I had ordered Hunter to move over here. No. He just got the order to uh, go into column.
Still doing some fire. He's already wavering. A part of Jackson's division. Army of the Shenandoah. Oh, this is Jackson's, uh... This is Jackson's army. It's Longstreet who's not on the field. Or hasn't been seen yet. Ooh, I hope I don't regret coming out of these entrenchments over here on the left. Unlimber. Well, he's limbered now, isn't he? He is. That's not a great spot. Let's go ahead and you right up here on on this fence rail on this fence rather and hunter this man yeah right here it's fine Not feeling great about this situation over here. To the extent that when uh, it's going to be time to redeploy pretty soon, I think I'm going to take two of these three brigades. And I'll probably leave one brigade right here in the middle. And I'll put two brigades down here. You know, somebody got wounded. I guess a lucky uh, artillery shot got uh, Cox. That stinks. Okay, do we have any additional forces that came up earlier than expected? No. Okay. So who's actually in command of Cox's brigade? Oh, I thought one of the... Nobody, it appears. And ostensibly there's a colonel or something from one of the regiments, but it's not showing that. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, I'll actually get up on the right on the fence, guys.
they'll settle in on the fence once the once the clock starts moving. Either that or we'll manually do it. Okay, we're a little bit uh, soft in the center here. Well, I guess Wallace is really the center now. Do I want to move a brigade down here? I'm going to leave it. Yeah, they're in cover now. You don't really have to precisely place units so that they're in cover. If, if they're pretty close to a creek or a trench or fence they'll they'll pretty much assume that cover in most cases sometimes they get confused but usually they do a pretty good job at that I think Yeah, they're not make, they're not making any moves. See, they've got their objective now. They're just going to sit. So now, yeah, it has changed from a meeting engagement to the honest is on us to attack, which we will eventually do. One hour until Patterson and uh, McDowell come. Oh, and it tells you the direction they come from. From Berryville and both from Berryville. Can we even... McDowell and Patterson both arrive. Not yet shown on the map. Doesn't really say which one of these two is from Berryville. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I didn't even realize that was one of our spots. They're both, both of these, uh, oh, this could get really messy really quick. Because we know that there's Confederate shoes just right here. I'm surprised they haven't already been spotted. 
Okay, well, this uh, video is over an hour. I believe I am going to put a cut in here and continue in the next episode. Thank you for watching.